sitting with Mark Larry Washington. Good morning, friends. Good morning, friends who are here and friends who are watching us on the internet. We welcome you to the service of worship at the Church on the Bayou. Does that sound okay to you guys? It sounds a little okay. It's hard for me to tell up here. Just a, one announcement um, in particular is to acknowledge these beautiful flowers that we have this morning that were given by Susan Conrad in memory of the best husband ever, so missed, Robert. I, I miss him every time I'm up here. He was, um, he was a, a, a very supportive and um, frequent commenter on my messages, and I always appreciate that. I miss that greatly. But don't anyone feel like you have to jump into that role? <laughs> Any other announcements that we need to share this morning? Okay, then let us bring our hearts and minds into a place of worship as we prepare to hear God's word and as we prepare to worship our living Lord. Our call to worship is printed in the bulletin. Happy are those who follow the ways of the Lord. Psalm 
God's ways are just and merciful. Those who follow God's ways are continually nourished in faith. In all that they do, they prosper. Come, let us open our hearts to God's compassionate love. Let us celebrate God's mercy and justice. Together in love, let us worship God. Please stand, if you're able, as we sing hymn number 161. be seated. In your bulletin you will find our prayer of confession. Please let's say it together. God of patience and mercy, we come to you offering lip service to serving you. But when things get difficult, when we are called to do something which is hard for us, we shy away from the duty and the opportunity. We turn our back on service out of fear or selfishness. Forgive us, gracious Lord. Heal our fears and our weaknesses. Strengthen us and give us courage to truly be your disciples, not counting the rewards, but rejoicing in the work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please take a moment in silent confession. When we bring our sins and our faults to the foot of the cross, when we confess our sins in honesty and humility. In that moment, we are all forgiven. Hallelujah, amen. Please stand as we sing the Gloria together.
because God in Christ has forgiven us, we are called to forgive one another. Therefore, peace be with you. And also with you. Please stay in your general area and turn to greet one another with the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. <laughs> Peace be with you. <laughs> the scripture lesson this morning starts from the Old Testament, Psalm number one. Happy are those who reject the advice of evil people, who do not follow the example of sinners, or join those who have no use for God. Instead, they find joy in obeying the law of the Lord, and they study it day and night. They are like trees that grow beside a stream, that bear fruit at just the right time and whose leaves do not dry up. They succeed in everything they do, but evil people are not like this at all. They are like straw and the wind blows them away. Sinners will be condemned by God and kept apart from God's own people. The righteous are guided and protected by the Lord, but the evil are on the way to their doom. The New Testament reading this morning is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 9. A little bit of background before I start this reading which we're starting in verse 30. Mark is the shortest of the four Gospels, but Mark is jammed, packed full of more stories of Jesus' miracles than any of the other Gospels. In Mark 9, in this chapter, the transfiguration has just happened. Jesus has just cast out a demon from a child healed that child from a lifelong illness. Here in Mark 9, Jesus predicts his death and his crucifixion. And where we pick up this reading today, he continues to teach the very confused and very overwhelmed disciples. Mark 9 takes place in Palestine and we pick up the story in Mark 9 in the area of Lower Galilee. Just leaving that region, Jesus and the students, the disciples, traveled through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know that they were there because he wanted to spend more time with the, the students, the disciples, teaching them. Jesus said to the students, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. He will be killed, but three days later he will rise from the dead. The disciples had no idea what he was talking about, and they were too afraid to ask him what he meant. This is God's word for us this morning. Thanks be to God. In your bulletin, you have an insert with the lyrics for the anthem we're about to hear. As you know, I started um, providing these lyrics because I was missing many of the beautiful words from our anthem, and I thought if I was missing them sitting right here, you might be missing them too. So please enjoy this beautiful anthem from our amazing choir.
once again, we could just go home right now and just be filled with the Holy Spirit. I heard somebody murmur. <laughs> Thank you so much for that beautiful music. It's so wonderful to have new voices in our in our wonderful group. And thank you, Dan, so much. So last week, when last we joined us, in last week's episode, we talked about how God's laws, God's commandments, are kind of a rudder for us, or should be a rudder for us. We talk about, we talked about, you know, the Old Testament and Jesus teaching the New Testament, giving us direction to our lives, helping us to have some clarity about the differences between right and wrong. We talked about how following God's ways can keep us on track and how God's laws are designed for our benefit, not for our misery. They're designed for our good and for our joy and our happiness and our freedom so that we may live lives in peace. So the message for us today that God put on my heart is about how we can filter through the many distractions in our lives, filter through the noise in our lives to really focus on what God's will is for us. Do you struggle sometimes with trying to filter out from the distractions to stay focused on God's word and God's direction? I do. This is not a simple thing. It's not something that is like a light switch, I don't think. We just heard these beautiful lyrics, praise the Lord God from whom every blessing flows, to God be the glory now and forever, praise his holy name. God is great and greatly to be praised. These are beautiful sentiments. They're joyful, joyful words. They're celebratory. But the fact is that we, in our daily lives, day in and day out, we don't walk around praising God all the time and celebrating in God's love all the time. We just don't because we get distracted. We get concerned. We sometimes even get tripped up by things that life hands us. So what happens for us when we cannot hear God's direction clearly because of all the other stuff? What happens for us when we struggle to celebrate God or when we're feeling like God isn't even hearing us at all? or worse, that we're just not hearing God at all. See, what happens deep inside of you when you really think that God is trying to tell you something, trying to give you some direction, but you're just not too sure? Hearing God's will for us and God's word for us and staying anchored in our faith are not always the same thing. And please hear this, because when we know with absolute certainty that we're living in God's will, we are on the right track, go team, I absolutely know that this is the direction that I'm supposed to go. I absolutely 100% know that age 50, whatever I was, 7, 58, 56, I don't remember, that I was supposed to uproot my entire universe in New England and move down here to Florida to start a whole new universe. Maybe we feel like we don't have to try to have faith in those times, right? Anybody in the room ever had such a firm conviction that you were following God's will that you knew with certainty that this is what you were supposed to do, then you know, if you've had that experience, that you don't have to be trying to have faith because you feel like you and God are like best buds. You've got it. It's easier to feel safe and secure and totally on God's path when you know with clarity that you're living in God's will. Where this gets complicated, however, for all of us, 
is when we're just not sure. Just trying to have clarity, trying to know for sure. Maybe you're feeling this today in some form or fashion. Maybe you're just not sure right now what the next right thing is for you to do to be staying in God's will for your life. What is God's will for your life? Not for your partner's wife, not for your kids' lives. What is God's will? And what is God trying to do in your life for your benefit? Maybe you've stopped even trying to listen for God's will. Ah, it's too much work, too much trouble, can't be bothered. My friends, this is a real world struggle. This is real world stuff that we deal with and it's a real world problem and God put it on my heart to share with you today because it's important for us to hear there is a reason why God's messages and direction to us are not crystal clear. How confounding has this been for you over the years when you've read the parables or when you've been trying to understand something that the Bible says and you're just like, why didn't he just come out and tell us, right? Why didn't he just say it? There's a reason why God does not always tell us things with precision or clarity. And there's a reason why even the exhausted students, the disciples, who were right there, they were as present with Jesus as we are present with one another right now. There is a reason why even they did not understand fully who they were with. How could they? I'm gonna be killed and then three days later I'm gonna rise again and okay, what? No wonder they were confused. No wonder they felt confounded. But the reason that God does not give us messages with clarity is because we are called to faith. We are called that our faith must override literally everything else and especially in the wake of misunderstanding and fear. Hear this again, please. Our faith must take precedence over everything else, especially in times of misunderstanding or fear when we just aren't sure which way to go, what's gonna happen next, I just don't know, and we whip ourselves up, and we whip up, and we whip up. And it is in that moment that we are called to turn inward to God's love, turn upward to God's love and say, I don't know and I don't get it, but I'm trusting that you've got me, Lord. And that is the crux of our faith. The sad reality is that many, many of us live in fear, right? Fear of something, fear that can be paralyzing, fear of money problems or family problems or illness. Please understand, I am not minimizing these in any way. I am acknowledging that fear is real for us as human beings. And I want you to hear that God acknowledges this too. And the entire point of the gospel is that Jesus shared all of these things so that his joy could be in us and our joy could be complete. God did not do what God did for you. God does not do in the current day what God does for us so that we can live in misery. There are parts of this gospel in Mark that are extremely disturbing in Mark 9, Jesus scolds the disciples publicly. These frightened, overwhelmed humans that Jesus handpicked, by the way, to be the ones that would spread the news of this incredible happening in the history of the world. He scolds them. 
He admonishes them for their lack of understanding. Remember, Jesus was human, fully man, fully God. In Mark 9, Jesus picks his favorites, Peter, James, and John. He picks three out of the crowd to go with him up to the transformation. Well, what's up with that? How did the rest of the crowd feel? Anyone in here ever been left behind? Anyone in here ever felt less than? Stupid? Not good enough? Jesus gets aggravated with them. And the words that shook me to my core as I studied this this week was that the students did not understand what Jesus was saying to them and they were too afraid to ask him what he meant. This broke my heart. Can you feel what they might have been feeling in that moment? Really, Jesus? I left my family, I left my job, I left everything to follow you and traipse around the country with you and you're yelling at us? And now because you're probably God, I'm thinking you're probably God, look at all the stuff you've been doing. I don't want to be the one to say anything, I'm not going to ask. Anybody in here have any childhood memories of not getting something that an adult was trying to teach you? Anybody in here ever felt like you were just not getting it and you couldn't get it and you were trying and you were trying? Anybody? Feel what that feeling must have been like. And if you have not had that experience, hallelujah for you. But when I read that passage and that line over and over and over again, I thought these precious human beings were too afraid to ask Jesus for clarification, for more information, so they stayed silent, probably even more frightened and more perplexed than they had been. But Jesus had deliberately removed them from the crowd to take them away in private, to continue to teach them. And we don't get to know the nuances of what happened in that time. That's not reported. We don't get to know what that conversation was. We don't get to know if there were tears or screaming or hugs. And the empowering lesson that I learned long ago and that I heard a long time ago that is the most excellent tool that I know of to be able to ask and to filter out the distractions and to push through your fear is to be able to say in your own words, God Almighty, I don't understand. I don't get it. And I am angry and I am hurt and I am frightened. And I need you, Lord, to show me in a way that I can understand, not in a way that Lynn can understand, not in a way that Susie or Ron can understand. I need you to show me in a way that I can understand what I'm supposed to do here because I am terrified. And then when we say that prayer, however many times we say it, then we must have the courage to stop and listen for the answer. God speaks to us in so many ways, through other people, through situations, through a song you hear, through millions of ways, sunrise, sunset, the list goes on. But when we insist on busying ourselves with distractions, well, I'm just going to keep busy. I'm just going to keep busy. I'm not going to think about it. Anybody ever do this? I'm not going to think about it, because if I think about it, I'm going to get, what, real? Healed? We have to allow ourselves to stop and hear God's voice for us, especially in those times where we're feeling like we're spinning out of control. And if we do not deliberately make time in every single day, 
we are missing out on gigantic love and gigantic peace. And it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter how long you've been in church, it doesn't matter how many times you've heard this message or a message like it, hear it for the first time today, people. Every single one of us was handpicked to follow. We have been handpicked to be the students and to share the message of freedom, not of judgment, not of hatred, not of finger wagging. We have been called to be messengers of light and love and peace, but we cannot give what we have not got inside of us. These are the times, my friend, when we need to lean into our faith and the difference between the frightened disciples and you is that guess what we've got? Anybody know what we've got that they didn't have? The Holy Spirit. The God that rose Jesus off of the cross lives in you and lives in me and that's what we have that the disciples did not have. We don't have to feel too intimidated to ask because all we have to do is get quiet and listen for that voice and I promise you it comes. I promise you if you allow yourself to feel the direction of the Holy Spirit, you will feel the direction. And that is where the filtering out of all the noise happens. And then when it happens, you kind of want more because it's kind of cool. And you think, wow, look at that. Look what just happened. And you want to tell somebody or not. We don't ever have to be afraid to ask our God for clarity because what we know today what the students in Mark 9 did not know is that we know who Jesus is. We know with certainty that Jesus is God. And we know that he is alive and lives and reigns within us. I'll end with this. If you hear nothing else today, please hear this. God's will for your life is not to live in strife and misery. God's will for your life is not to live in worry. And God's will for your life is not to be doing more, it is to be being more in connection with God's love. And none of us does this by ourselves. We do this with the support of one another. We do this with the support of our loved ones. We do this with the support of the Word and the Holy Spirit and our living Jesus Christ, in whose name I leave this message. Amen. Our choir is going to make their way back up. And once they are back and settled, when you're, if you're comfortable, please stand and turn to hymn number 383.
Please be seated. This is the time in our service we are, where, where we are grateful to receive gifts and offerings for the work inside and outside the walls of this church. printed in the bulletin, Gracious, Generous Creator. We are humbled by how you lavish us with love and blessings. We are humbled by the giving hearts in this room right now. Thank you for these gifts and bless them to your glory today and every day in this community and the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Before I open the floor for prayers that we will lift up today, I want to encourage you all that if for any reason you need to or want to be in touch with me, my contact information is on the back of your bulletin. In the years that I've been here, how many? Have I been here? Three? Three? Three plus years that I've been here, someone has reached out to me without my reaching out to them exactly twice. And I don't know if that's for whatever reason, but I wanted to say, please feel free if there's anything on your heart that I can be praying for you for, or that you would like extra support for, I'm honored to do that for you. 
Are there any prayers that we need to lift up today? I know Pam, Robert, and Wayne. Is that right? Let me write those again. Robert and Wayne. Yes, Jack. Chris's grandmother. Do you know her first name? Okay. Okay. Yes, Susan. Eileen. Yes, Dolores. Yes, T. Thank you. Yes. Do you remember Chet, who you were thanking on for healing? He died suddenly on Wednesday, and uh, he was his friend and his family. He sucked Jeffrey. Are they out on the West Coast? They're, uh, they live about a mile from me. Locally, in okay. Kent and Lisa. Lisa. Lisa, his wife. Gracious, loving God, as we come into a time of prayer, lifting up so many people who are in need, and God, I ask that you would hear the prayers that went unspoken this morning, those deepest places in our hearts where there is worry or anguish, sadness, fear. God, we thank you for the privilege of worshiping in this beautiful place. We thank you for the freedom, the hard-fought freedom that we experience here in the United States. We thank you for the men and women and the families who sacrifice every day so that we may remain free. We thank you for our first responders who tirelessly toil day in and day out in our towns to respond when we need help. We ask that you would bless them and protect them. This morning, Lord, we lift up Robert and Wayne. We ask for blessing and healing and care for Chris's grandmother, for Vivian, for Nancy. Lord, we ask that you would be with Rob and Kim and Andrea and that there would be continued healing for Francie. God, you know what's happening for Bob and for Adam and Caitlin, and we ask that you would continue to give them strength one moment at a time to come through the challenges and the disasters of their lives. Please comfort Isa and the family of Kent as they mourn his death and be with Dawn and Pat. And God, we ask that you would bless and strengthen our church family, our community, as we strive to do your will, to hear your direction, and to be authentic ambassadors of your love to one another and to our surroundings. Lord, all of these things we lift up to you, saying the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is number 302.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and fill you with his love and his peace. Leave this place filled with the comfort of knowing that you are held in the arms of our loving God, no matter what. Have a blessed, safe, and joyful week. Amen.